Hi guys, so today we're going to be going over Meriden. Um, I don't even know why I keep it a surprise because I have it in the video title, so I'll probably just start with the binders right in front next time. Uh, so if some of you by now are knowing, we have our top five, which is now a top seven. Our most expensive cards are at the number one spot, Chrome Mox, for around $80. Then we have the Chalice of the Void, around $55. Extra Planner Lens, around $30. Tooth and Nail, $20. Bucks. War Elemental, at $14. And then we have Adalkan Archmage and the Sword of Caldera that are both around that $12 point. So close enough. I thought it'd be fun to include them. Um, so here we go. Um, funny, well, I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but if you weren't in Magic in the era, you'll see that here there's a little sword. And uh, there was uh, Kaldra, which is an important character that we never really see, funny enough. Even in Modern Horizon, they just had the uh, Kaldra remade, which was all the enchantment stuff. I'd love to know the full lore around Kaldra. Uh, but the set symbol is uh, the Sword of Caldera, and the following ones are the Shield and the Helm. <clears throat> uh, this is the first modern set, I believe. Maybe, I hope I'm not completely mistaken there, but I believe it is. And it's done on the Plain of Mirrodin, which is a which is the plane created by Karn. Um, so it's an art. It's a plane that's all all artifact. And almost every creature interacts with artifacts in, in some way. This one does not, uh, but it's Beautiful Art by Matthew Wilson. That's the Luminous Angel. This is another foil set, but you can't really, I don't know if you can tell on camera. The foiling is quite subtle. Maybe we see it better on like here, like Razor Barrier. Yeah, fundamentally different foiling from, from what we see in like vintage or legacy foils. Um, so sorry, for a second, back to the lore. We have this plane, which was created by Karn. And um, it's uh, the same thing that we've been revisiting these days. Uh, they're suffering. Karn came to create this plane and still was infected with some glistening oil, which is what um, is the origin of... Phyrexia and Phyrexians. And uh, uh, he left in charge a person called, well, a thing or person called Memnarch uh, to rule the plane in his stead. And Memnarch became a bad guy. So that's kind of what happens. We see our, our native Marins. Thirst for knowledge, super played. Really fun card. I know it's just an uncommon, but uh, some of them are really cool to, to look at and to me bring, again, a lot of memories. <clears throat> Completing this set was um, was not an easy task. It's a big set with 306 cards. Uh, it took a fair amount of time. Vidalkan Archmage in foil is actually around $40. So there's, there's a lot of cards that are in the... <clears throat> 15 to $40 range. So buying them in chunks can eventually be expensive. Um, and so this one took a fair amount of time for me to complete. Now we get into the Black Foils, Reaver Demon, and the Slith. Did, did anyone in the comments um, or that watches this ever play a five color Slith deck? Um, I wonder if that was even a thing. Reaver Demon, what does he do? When River Demon comes into play, if you played it from your hand, destroy all non-artifact, non-black creatures, they can't be regenerated. All right, must see place somewhere, maybe. Board wipe, board wipe for your opponents, that gives you a creature and a fair amount of advantage. I remember when Wall of Blood was very expensive. This had a a pretty good combo, actually, where you could win on, I think, turn one or turn two. I, I'd have to remember in what deck it was. Blood is thicker than mortar. 
Um, and it was with a 1-1 one, one haster or something like that, and you could give it 19 plus 1 plus 1 counters. And I think it was um, with, what was it? It must be Dark Ritual and, and Shenanigans. The Atogs. I love this tribe. I wish we saw more of them. They, um, I, I'm not even sure when the last one was reprinted. Here we see all the mirrors, mirror creatures being uh, crafted. So you can tell some of these cards are not in perfect condition at all. Again, they warp a little bit. This is um, this is some of the modern modern foiling. I just really enjoyed this kind of art and feel for the set. Um, it is harder to tell the collector number, especially on black and red cards. Uh, due to this, this foiling just made it really complicated to tell. Let's see, oh, there are two seething songs. Oh, one is non-foil, one is foil. Uh, this one is signed. Yeah, this is number 104. But yeah, quite difficult to, to read the numbers due to the foiling. I think they fixed that. Uh, took them a very long time actually to fix that. I just really enjoy watching the characters. Look at this Valshock Battlemaster. I could demonstrate how the Lenin, how the Leonin Sun Splicer works, but then you'd be too dead to buy one. Ha ha ha. Who is this character? Do we know? Anyone knows who that character that we just showed was? I just, I, I enjoyed this plane. It was uh, very, very artifact heavy. Glissa Sunseeker. She's the eventual undoer of Memnarch. She killed him. It, whatever it is. There's a secret at the heart of this world and I will unlock it. We know that she eventually became uh, Phyrexianized through the new sets. I hope not to be spoiling too much. It's been a while that it's out now, so some that follow may be aware. Look at me, cheating again. This card's in French. Now I know I need to have it in English. Please let me know if you spot other um, mistakes because I then am obliged to correct them now that I'm reviewing these collections with you because it's been a long time. It's been a while. I may even revisit some <laughs> again. Um, going over this set was requested. And so, oh, uh, we're getting into the expensive stuff. Let me be quiet for a moment and show them to you. These are the top two most valuable cards in the Meriden block in foil. Charcrow Mox at around $260 and Chalice of the Void at $140. They're really... They've been reprinted and they are holding um, a fair amount of value for, I think, being reprinted at least three times. So that's, um, that's pretty cool, to be honest. I wish some cards could be retired so that they could join a, a new reserve list. I think it would just give more opportunities to new players and newcomers to the game. Simply because um, if they didn't reprint new cards, they eventually would go up in value. And, um, and you'd be able to trade them for cards on the old reserve list and get a better collection, everything gets more valuable, it incentivizes you to buy more, I think it helps the company, the collector, and everyone. Sorry for my ramble on the reserve list, I'm sure many people will disagree, maybe a few will even unsubscribe if you got to this nine minute point and heard my little rant. This is extra planner lens, which is at $60, it's the fifth most expensive foil on the set. Gilded Lotus, this art is gorgeous to me. Can you see? 
Martina Pilsarova. Over such beauty, wars are fought. With such power, wars are won. Yeah, anything with Lotus, anything with Mox, is just truly, truly stunning and, and valuable. Brings a lot of memory for many people. Or Lotus, obviously. If it has the word Lotus, it's, it's iconic and special in that way. I see Manipulator. I actually believe I have a French Error card, yep, on the back from, yep. So funny enough, the French, my French foil version says tap or untap. I think all French cards have that same mistake, but it's a big, um, it's a, it's a big error in translation because here you have to pay one, you can only tap artifact, creature, or land. And here, this is one you can tap or untap. So if anyone else knows about this, what can we do? Is it considered some kind of an errata? And this one is in foil. Maybe it commands a little premium. Someone help me out. I'm not sure about that. The leveler. This dude saw play. He eats up your whole library. And Krark's thumb. Oh, wow. Sorry, these bring up a lot of, of memories to me. I always wanted to know the lore behind Krark and who he was, and we ended up getting more and more information on him, especially on that unset. I should go over an unset. You know what? Let's do an unset tomorrow. For those who stick around this long, you know what's going on tomorrow. We're going to do an unset. Leveler was seen in a deck. Um, that was quite fun to play with. Lightning Greaves. This word something, but the card itself has been reprinted a million times and yet still retains some value because it's played in so many commander um, decks. Maybe modern too, I'm not sure. Again, please correct me. I know I'm, I'm wrong fairly often, and some of you like to teach me stuff, and I'm very grateful for it. I, I genuinely enjoy getting that information. Here we have all the mirrors, the Enforcer, the Incubator. I believe the Enforcer even has some kind of a promo. Yep. There we go. Who remembers who was around playing during this format? What did you guys do? Even I, I remember this and the Oblivion Stone. I keep bringing them up to camera because they, they mean something to me and I find them really fun to look at. I'd, I'd really be interested in knowing if, um, if it's fun for you to, to see a random guy just flipping through his binders of Magic the Gathering cards and telling you some stories. This is pretty staff, as you can tell from the name of the card. It's actually quite expensive at, at like 85 plus dollars. I couldn't find anything cheaper on TCG in decent condition. So this used to be worth nothing at all or very, very little. And and now it's uh, it's quite expensive. And this is the Platinum Angel, which we saw in the Masterpiece series a couple days ago. With Sophia, where we were discussing the beauty of the Masterpiece and some of the important cards. And I believe this was the first time that Platinum Angel was printed. I really enjoy seeing all these mirrors. It's It's also crazy how subtle the foiling was. This is a slightly longer video because these are really big sets. It's 306 cards. I know that YouTube doesn't like it. Here is our pre-release. The Sword of Caldera. You see the special art here for the pre-release and then you see the normal art here in foil as well. But yeah, the foiling is so subtle. It's not always easy to tell. And that's a bit of a shame. It's uh talismans. I wish it, they, they stood up to you a little more. Um, that the shininess was a little more clear and present on the cards. 
Are there a few of you or many of you that watch that also collect full sets and complete sets? Is there any other way that you like to go around it? Um, I've heard of some people that just do everything alphabetically, alphabetically. So not by collector number, they'll just do everything and it's kind of a mix and mash of colors. And I'm sure it looks very pretty and I would love to see um, some of those collections just because they're, they're really fun to, to look at. Welding jar was a pretty big deal when it came out and the foil was very expensive. It was nearly at $50 at a point, I remember. And then it got reprinted into Oblivion and now it does not, which is also fine. This is the first time we saw Artifact Lens. Artifact Lens, Lands, gee, English. Ancient Den, oh, Cloud Post. There is a, a Locust deck which is quite fun. Another cheat, look at me. The Great Furnace in French, Grand Fourneau. Yep, so that's two cards now that I need to get in English. Seat of the Synod, uh, Tree of Tales, and Vault of Whispers, and then we get to go and look over, and, sorry, Glimmer Void, of course. On Mirrodin. The land of five suns and artifacts. These lands are stunning to me. Look at this. I just enjoy seeing the a lot of the background and for all the art. These planes are phenomenal. I know they're not full art. I know they're not absolutely mental, but to me, these are stunning in themselves and in the way that they are. And it's very reminiscent. All right. And that's it, I believe, for the set of Mirrodin. Thank you so much for staying with me if you stayed this long. Um, as I've said now, I'm gonna pick an unset and tomorrow we're gonna be doing an unset. So I'm excited for that. And I, I enjoy the opportunity to, to share all this stuff with you guys. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.